Hello and welcome to the shop. This is the third and final installment in my kitless bespoke pen turning video series. Uh, I'd like to start by thanking everyone for the, the rave reviews I got on the first two. Everyone who watched it seemed to really enjoy it. Uh, I got some great comments. I got some incredible feedback. Uh, there were a couple of things that I had forgotten. Actually, the two gentlemen that I learned bespoke turning from both watched and commented and uh, reminded me of a couple of things that I didn't remember from the class. So I'm really happy about that. Today, we're going to be turning the section of the pen. Now, the section is what holds the nib, and we're gonna. This is not the one that I'm going to turn today. I'm actually going to turn a brand new one. This is from another pen, but the section threads into the body of the pen, and your converter would plug into the back of this and feed ink to your nib. This is probably the most complex portion of the pen to turn, so let's not waste any more time. Let's get over to the lathe and let's turn a section. I've got a nice little piece of dark blue alumilite here that we're going to use for the section. And what I'm going to do is to, I'm going to start by just chucking it up into my pin jaws. And I'm going to just basically true up the end of it and try to get it somewhere between 19 and 20 millimeters so that I can grip it in my collet chuck. Just see how that looks. Not too bad. All right, let me tighten her down. Bring up our tailstock and start turning. Right now we're at about 20.25 millimeters. I'm going to go ahead and take it just a hair more down. That put us at 1973, so that's perfect. I'd like to start off here by passing along something I learned, and it is about the proper way to use a collet chuck. I did not know this. In my previous two videos, I was placing the collet inside of the back half of the chuck and then threading the locking cap on. And what I learned is that's a mistake. You take the collet, put it into the front half of the chuck, snap it into place, then you start your threads and that's when you can grip your item. What that does is that makes absolutely sure that you have centered your workpiece. I'm going to tighten her down a little bit with these Tommy bars. And we're ready to turn. Here's another little tip that I picked up from some folks on my first couple of videos. I'm going to be offering some support to this block of Alumilite while I true it up. And I'm going to do that with my 60 degree live center. The tip is if you take one of your centering bits and you drill in, oh, about three eighths of an inch into the back of your Alumilite block, this centering bit has a 60 degree cone on it. That's going to allow my live center to fit very nicely right inside of the block. We're not gonna to have to worry about that divot either because once we get this trued up, we're gonna go ahead and drill, out, drill that out and we'll already have our hole centered to do so. Also with the centering bits, uh, we don't necessarily need to use lubrication and I don't necessarily need to go as slow as I was going in the first couple of videos. We're not gonna generate that much heat and we're not really drilling that far into the blank. So we can just go ahead and go for it. Now I'm gonna bring my 60 degree live center right in, lock it into place snug it up and we should be ready to true. The overall diameter of this blank is not all that important at this point. So I'm just gonna knock the corners off and get it round and we'll start working on the blank and we'll take it down to the proper size later on in the process. I'm going to cut a 10 millimeter tenon on the end of this blank 
and I want that to be about 10.3 millimeters deep. So we're going to grab our calipers and make a little mark. And then we'll transfer that mark all the way around the blank. To get a perfect 10 millimeter tenon, I'm going to actually use a box wrench. And what I've done is I've taken the short end of this wrench and I've ground it off a little bit on my grinder. And that produces a little bit of a burr on there. Uh, and it will cut this alumilite quite nicely. We still have a ways to go before we want to employ this tool. So we're going to go back to the parting tool and uh, finish getting this tenon down to the appropriate size. And of course I didn't hit record, so we didn't get to see it, but essentially while the lathe was spinning, and I'll put it on low speed for the demonstration, I brought this wrench in and I pushed the bottom of it against the Alumalite and I just pushed the wrench in, moved it over and did the same thing all the way down the length of the tenon. And what that does is cuts a perfect 10 millimeter tenon. Right before we turn the threads on our tenon, we wanna make sure that the shoulder back here is perfectly flat. So I'm going to take my parting tool and I'm just going to go in and clean up uh, the back end of this blank. You might have noticed while I was squaring up the shoulder of my blank that I cut a slight relief behind the tenon. We need to do that because it will it will allow the section to more closely seat with the body of the pen. I'm ready now to thread my tenon and for that I'll be using an M101 die. I'm still using mineral oil as a lubricant at this point in time but a recommendation was made that I go with canola oil, PAM or even WD-40 and the reason behind that, if I understood correctly, was it cleans up much easier. I can put a little bit of uh, denatured alcohol inside of the cavity, shake it up, and it should uh, rinse that away much easier than it's going to rinse the mineral, mineral oil away. So I will be moving to that at some point in the future. But we're going to use what we have for the time being. Ready to start threading, and I'm just going to twist the die into the tenon and back off couple of twists and back off. You can see the curls forming out in front of the die. It's cutting nice and smooth. I'm going to take it all the way up until it bottoms out against the shoulder. All right, let me back off. I've got some really nice looking threads there, but what I wanna do now, this is another tip I got from my videos, is I'm gonna flip the die around in the die holder and I'm gonna run it back up onto the threads. And the reason why a die is generally like a V. It's going to be wider at the front and it's going to narrow down as it moves in. And what that's doing is it's cutting the threads, but that means the threads out front are shallower than the threads in the back. By flipping this die around, I'm going to cut my threads to the same depth from front to back. You can see I've reversed my die. I'm just going to put a little bit more lubrication on the threads and then we're going to run it back up on there. I shouldn't get much resistance at all, and I'm not. It's moving right up on there. I do have some small curls. That's good. Run it right up to the shoulder. If I encounter any resistance, I'll stop and back off, but so far it's been, it was just super smooth, so I didn't uh, worry about that too much. Now I should have some nice, even threads from top to bottom. 
I need to drill a seven millimeter hole down the center of my section and it needs to be about 31.10 millimeters deep. So I'm gonna put a red mark right here on my bit. You might remember that I used my centering bit and put a nice little dimple in the front of this tenon so that I could hold it steady with my uh, 60 degree live center. So we're not gonna have to start the bit this time. Had we not done that, I would have uh, would have used that to start the bit. Put a little lubrication on here to keep things cool and we're ready to go. I believe that should get us to where we need to be. You might be wondering where the depth of 30.1 millimeters came from. Here's a section from a previous pin, and if we measure that, you can see that it comes out to about 29.86 millimeters. What I'm shooting for is a section that is between 29 and 30 millimeters in length. So by drilling to 30.1, I guarantee this bit goes far enough through this section that when I part it off, and face the end of it, I'm gonna have a hole all the way through my section. I've got a little mandrel here that I'm gonna go ahead and thread onto my section. I'm gonna remove it from the collet chuck and then we're gonna flip it around and hold it by this mandrel for shaping. Need to swap out my collet for the right size. I'm ready now to go ahead and trim off the excess, and then I'll shape the remainder of the section. So that I'm able to remove the right amount of material, I'm just gonna take a measurement of an existing section, and it looks like about 1933, so let's mark it. All right, I'm use a pencil just to darken that up a little bit. I've brought my tailstock up for support. I'm just going to trim this little front piece off and we'll be ready to start shaping our section. As I begin shaping this section, something occurred to me. I probably ought to take it down to the proper diameter first. And that diameter is going to be the same as my mandrel, which is right around 12 millimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and just clean this up, take it down to 12 millimeters, then we'll come back and perform our shaping on it. We're almost down to the right diameter. The ribbons make it really tough for me to, to uh, tell when I'm there, so I, I gotta keep those cleaned off. I don't wanna overshoot.
I'm really happy with that. I am right next to the mandrel, so I feel like I've got the proper diameter. I'm ready to go ahead now and do a little shaping. I'm going to stop a second and just compare that to my previous nib. And it looks like I'm getting there. I need to round over the front a little bit. And the back I need to take a little more meat off of. So we're going to work on that. I'm liking the look of that. I'm going to go ahead now, break out the micro mesh. We're going to clean this up, get it looking nice, and then we'll come back and finish threading for the nib. Just going to use the micro mesh here and any grooves from the tools this will take out. It'll really clean this up and make it look nice. I'm going to round over the front so that it's got a nice feel in your hand. I'm going to work the most with the yellow pad and then we'll just work our way down through the rest of them. Stop the lathe real quick. Let's take a look at that and see how it's shaping up. Oh yeah, that's looking really nice. I'm going to go ahead and shut the camera off and finish out with the micro mesh. You can see I've got some scratches in here I need to take out. Uh, this is the first pad. It's really aggressive. Uh, it's going to put some scratches in there. And I'm going to go ahead and work through the rest of the pads, which will remove those scratches. And it uh, should look really nice when I'm done. I'm just finishing up with the final pad. It's looking really nice. Shut her down here and see what she looks like. That looks great. I'm ready to buff this up, but I'm not going to buff it now. I'm going to go ahead and take care of the final few things I have to do, and then we'll take it to the buffing wheel and get it uh, get it buffed up and looking really nice. I'm going to drill a 1964 inch hole into my section, and that hole is going to be 0.518 inches deep. And where that measurement comes from is on your on your nib. You're going to drill from the top of the nib. To where the threads start. That is 0.518 of an inch. I've already marked my bit, so let's go ahead and drill the hole. going to back out and clear that off because I'm having trouble seeing my mark and I don't want to overshoot. And there we go. I've chucked up an S bit and we're going to drill 0.94 inches deep and basically that is to account for the shoulder from the top of the shoulder to the bottom of the shoulder on the tip of the nib housing. My bit is marked. Just get a little bit of lubrication on there and we're ready to drill. I put my sliding tap and die holder back on the lathe and I've got a tap that is a M.7475 tap and I'm going to tap in just a little bit deeper than the length of the thread. So if we come back here, we're going to basically tap a little over three quarters of the way down the tap. Once again, we're going to take our time, a couple of turns, back it off. No sense getting in a hurry with this. He 
These are very, very fine threads, so we want to take our time. Make sure we don't strip them out. Go just a tiny bit farther. All right, let's back this out. There we go. Get our tap cleaned off. Now let me clean off the section and we'll test it with the nib. We've got our nib and let's just see how she fits. Oh, that is a really nice fit. I'm very, very happy with that. All right, I'm gonna get the nib out of here, get our buffing wheel on the lathe. We're gonna buff this up and we'll assemble it into the pin and see how it looks all together. Here's a quick peek at all of my parts. There's my section. I think it looks fantastic. What I want to do now is grab the body of the pin. I keep touching the camera just to keep it in focus. It just wants to focus on the wrong thing and we get a little blurry. We'll put the body on. Okay. Take a look at it. I've got a really nice fit right there at the threads where the section meets the threads. That's what we want. Should fit really nicely in your hand for writing. There we go. Get the focus adjusted. There's the top to my pin. Threads right on. And we're ready to go. Well guys, that pretty well wraps up my kitless bespoke pen turning series. I hope you enjoyed these three videos. I hope you find them useful. Uh, if you decide to turn kitless pens, I hope you're able to glean some information from them. This has been as much of a learning experience for me as I'm sure it has been for you. Uh, there were some things I did in the first two videos that guys who are much better versed at turning kitless pens than I am caught and told me about and I really appreciated it and you saw some of that in this video I mentioned hey here's a tip here's something that I did wrong in the first video because I want to get better and I want to help you get better here is my pen I absolutely love everything about it I think it's gorgeous I love the uh, the color of the the body and the cap I think the uh, section turned out fantastic it's just absolutely amazing I cannot wait to turn many more of these pens so I really, really hope you enjoyed these three videos. I'd really like to hear what you thought about them in the comments below. And remember, guys, as always, I want you to know you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon, and have a great evening, everybody. Take care.